So some people are still struggling a bit with this concept, so I wanted to give you um, a little bit more instruction on it. Please watch this video, and if you don't understand it, I know it's annoying, watch it again and work through the problem as you go and try to figure it out. There's no way for me to download this into your brain, so this is the best thing that I can do. Here we go. Step number one. Very clearly, the first thing I'm going to do is isolate the variable in one equation. Here's what that means. Right here, I don't have either one of these that tells me something like this, y equals 2x plus 4. If I had something that told me that, then I would know that all I have to do is replace wherever I see y in one of the equations with this. However, it did not give me that. In this case, I just have two equations, and I'm going to have to do the work to get y or x all by itself. In order to do that, I'm going to pick the one that's the easiest for me. So to do that, I want to find one of the variables that doesn't have a coefficient. This variable does not have a coefficient. This variable does. I don't want to do that one. I could do this one. I could also do this one. This one doesn't have a coefficient either. This coefficient is 1. We don't see it. So I'm going to pick, well, I could pick either one of these. I'm going to choose the one that has y in it. First step. Isolate the variable in one equation. If it's not already written out like this, where y is equal to something, then you have to work that out. So here we go. 2x plus y is equal to negative 4. So I'm going to isolate my y. In order to do that, remember, think of yourself as an apex predator. You're trying to single out that one little lone gazelle, right? So you're going to do that by getting rid of all of the things around him, all of his friends. So we're going to remove this guy by taking the positive 2x and subtracting 2x. But in order to do that and keep it balanced, I have to subtract it from both sides. When I subtract 2x from 2x, I get 0. And that gives me just y over here. On this side, over here, right there, you can't do anything. You can't combine these two, so you just have to write them out exactly as they are. Negative 4 minus 2x. I could have written it out as negative 2x minus 4. It would have been fine that way too. I now have a value to substitute into my equation for y. I know what y is. y is this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that y value and I'm going to plug it in for that variable right there. So let's write it out and see what it looks like. It would look like this. x plus 4 times y, but we know that y is this, so we're going to do negative 4 minus 2x. We are substituting this value for y. That's why it's called substitution. Then we go through our steps like we do for any equation solving them. Combine like terms if possible, do the distributive property, and we always start with distributive property. So distributive property and then combine like terms if you can. So here we go. No like terms over here that we can get to before we have these parentheses. So we'll do this. x plus 4 times negative 4. I distribute that 4 there. It's going to be negative 16. So I'm going to change my addition symbol to subtraction. 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. 4 times negative 2x. That's negative 8x. I multiply the 4 times the negative 2. I get negative 8x is equal to 12. I did distributive property. I'm going to combine like terms. x plus a negative 8x gives me negative 7x. That cancels those guys out. I'm left with this negative 16 equal to 12. I can't combine any like terms, and I want to get my variable by itself, so I'm going to add 16 to both sides. That leaves me with this left alone, and I've got negative 7x is equal to, and on this side, 28. So, I still need to get x all by itself. I'm going to do the opposite of multiplication here. This is multiplying negative 7 times x. I'll do the opposite, which is division. I have to divide both sides by 7. This cancels out, and I'm left with x is equal to not a positive 4, but a negative 4, because 28 divided by negative 7 is negative. So, I have x is equal to 4. Step 1, I isolated the variable. This was step 1 right there. Step two, I substituted the expression that I got, right there, into the other equation, right there. So this is step two, right through here. 
Now I need to do step three. Well, I did step three. I solved for the variable and I got it right there. Now I'm going to substitute this value, right? The step that I got here, I'm going to substitute that into the other equation. So I just used this one. Now I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to take my x is equal to 4, negative 4 rather, and I'm going to plug that in to this equation. So 2 times x, and x is negative 4, plus y is equal to negative 4. Right? So I know I can multiply this. That's going to give me negative 8 plus y is equal to negative 4. No like terms on either side, so I'm going to have to isolate my y to find its value. I add 8 to both sides because I've got a negative 8 here. I add 8 to get rid of it. I'm left on this side with a y, and I'm left on this side. Negative 4 plus 8 is a positive 4. And now I have my points. My x is a negative 4, and my y is a positive 4. Now we can check it. So we got x is equal to negative 4 and y is equal to 4, which again was our point, negative 4, positive 4. And that is the point where these two lines intersect. So wherever they intersect, that's the point. This is negative 4, 4. So I want to check it. I'm going to go ahead and plug those values in. This is my x value and this is my y value because x always comes first in these coordinate pairs. So let's plug them in. I'll do the top one first. 2 times x, which is negative 4, plus whatever y is, and in this case that's 4, should be equal to negative 4. If we've done this right, then this will be true. So what do we get? We multiply 2 times negative 4. That gives us negative 8 plus the y, which is 4, should be equal to negative 4. When I combine negative 8 plus 4, I get negative 4. Are those two equal? Yes, they are. So it works for that equation. But it has to work for both of them. Not just the top one, but also the bottom one. So let's plug the values into the bottom one as well. Here is our x. We said x was negative 4. So we'll plug that in there. Plus 4 times y, and y was 4 positive 4. So again, we'll do our work. We've got negative 4. 4 times 4 is 16. That should be equal to 12. Well, 16 minus 4 is indeed 12. I know that it works for both of them. This is definitely the point where these two lines intersect at negative 4, positive 4. And that's it.